Hey guys, it's Sam, and today we have a pretty highly anticipated video, I would say, and that's me tier ranking all of the Hades Persephone books that I have read thus far. This is a video that's about six years in the making because I originally did a Hades Persephone video talking about the myth, what I liked in the myth, all of that, which I think is relevant to this video. So I'll link that on the screen for you guys to check out. Then you kind of know what angle I'm coming at with Hades Persephone retelling. So I don't have to explain a ton of things in this video or get people misunderstanding in the comments. But in this video, I'm including direct Hades and Persephone retellings where the characters are Hades Persephone, both in the ancient world and in modern times. And then I also have some more in inspired by books that are a little bit looser interpretations. A lot of those have some crossover with other myths, especially Beauty and the Beast. So those are also included on this list, mostly because I prefer those. So if we didn't have those included, there wouldn't be a lot that we're ranking fairly high. But I have about 17 books on this list, so let's get into it. All right, so for this, I have these tiers. I have God tier, which is gonna be very hard to get. I have great, good, meh, and shit. So let's do this. I'm gonna try to group this by direct Hades and Persephone retellings first, and then more inspired bys, I think, is the way I'm gonna go. There's gonna be some little gray area here, but bear with me. So the first one we have is Persephone by Caitlin Bevis. This is actually one that I had forgotten about. I knew I had read it, but I didn't know what I felt about it. I had to actually go back and watch my own review for it because this was in 2015. So because of that, some of these I read, again, like 2015, 2014. So my recollection of some of them is not gonna be perfect, but apparently I really liked Persephone. Um, it sounds like this one hit the mark for me in a lot of ways, as far as the characters and the characterization, that is my my biggest thing with Hades Persephone retellings. Um, to sum it up, if you didn't go and watch the video like I told you to, I like Persephone that has some spunk and fire to her and isn't just naive and innocent because she wasn't. She's a powerful badass bitch. I like a Hades who's not a total douchebag but isn't just maybe a little bit uh, more withdrawn because he's lived his life mostly in solitude but really a decent guy and really likes his job as like you know, king of the underworld kind of thing, like does a good job, is caring about that. I also like an underworld that is not very typical, that has more of like a lifelike uh, feel to it. So those are the major things. And Persephone had that. Um, what was a little different about this one is even though it is Hades and Persephone, it has, um, Persephone is like a teenage girl who figures out that she is a goddess and she has to be hidden away. And so her mom, instead of being like, anti-Hades, which is usually how the myths and the retellings go. Actually, it's like a collaborative thing and she hides in the underworld um, from other people and they have to become married to like protect her. So it's much less of the um, ooh, borderline ugh, that the myth can get because the original myth is, you know, a kidnapping. Um, I prefer modernized retellings where she chose to go. And in this case, this is like everyone kind of, you know, being like, yes, let's, let's do this. So this one, I would say, it's probably good. Maybe it was great, I don't know, but it's been so long since I read it that I can't really say, and it is a fairly short book, and I think plot-wise, maybe like a little um, but maybe this would be between good and great. I just can't remember a lot of it, sorry. Then we have The Star Touch Queen by Roshni Chakshi. This is still a retelling, but less so, because it combines other mythologies, um, Indian, I believe, mythologies, and this one, again, I read it like 2015 or 2016. But the author did write this as a Hades Persephone inspired story, and I also really like this one. Um, this one is one of my favorites. The writing, as far as Roshni Chakshi's writing, is superior to a lot of these on the list, because I do find a lot of Hades Persephone retellings, especially direct retellings, are not very well written. A lot of them are self-published and I'm not saying that that's necessarily a bad thing all the time. However, some of these you can definitely tell they're self-published and that's not a great thing. So this does not have that problem. The writing is really good. The characters are really good. She is very like the Persephone-esque character. It's not Persephone exactly, but the Persephone-esque character is very like spunky. And there's just like a lot of different elements that are added into this that aren't a complete redo of the Hades Persephone myth because we have these other mythologies mixed in. So I really liked that and I would put that into the great category. Then we have Everneath by Brody Ashton. This, um, this was not good. This is actually more, well one, it's very like traditional 2012 YA uh, in the way that it's written, so it's not written very well. But it's also not quite a Hades Persephone retelling. The main character is more of a, um, 
it's a Eurydice Orpheus retelling, sort of. So let me try to explain. There, it's a modern day thing. Um, they're not. Um, I, I don't think they're using any of their actual names from what I remember, um, but it's definitely that the themes are still there. Our, the main character is almost, she's not like Eurydice, she's almost more of an Orpheus. It's, it's very weird. She's almost like an Orpheus Persephone because she's in a love triangle with a guy who is like her, I think, best friend or something, but he's basically, he becomes the Eurydice because he gets sucked into the underworld at the very end of the book. Spoiler. So she has to go and like try to retrieve him. And then the other guy is like a Hades, but again, he's much more of like a Hades bad boy. Um, am I gonna put this in shit? I think I might. I think I'm gonna put it in shit. I think it was really poorly written. I think I gave it maybe like a two star. It could be in meh, but um, this was very much advertised as Hades for something. I mean, look at the cover and everything. And it wasn't. Ooh, I'm gonna skip some of these because these are much more, these are inspired by us. So I'll get back to that. Ooh, another one. The Gatekeeper's Bride. I'm forgetting who this is even by. Uh, this was horrible. I read this last year. No, maybe 2019. What is time? And this is a prequel to a series that is Greek gods uh, inspired retellings, whatever. And this was so bland. The writing was so bad. And was there like an erotic portion? I'm not even sure. I blocked so much of it out. I tried to get through this on ebook and couldn't because it was so poorly written and so boring. And there was like, there was no flavor. There was no spice. The writing was just very much like, then this happened, then this happened. It was, it was bad. And then it was a very traditional retelling. So it's like, I was reading the same story that I've read before, except for poorly written. It was, it was bad. Again, we have a couple more just inspired by us. Okay, The Dark Wife. I'm forgetting the author's names, crap. And again, of course, because it's in little squares like this, I'm not being able to see them. I should have done this better, oops. This is a lesbian Hades Persephone retelling. And this one's pretty good, I wanna say. I think this one's between good and great. Um, we, yeah, I, I would say it's between good and great. I wouldn't quite put it firmly in great though, uh, just based on like some of the writing and stuff, but this was pretty good. Um, I would say the Persephone, if I'm remembering right, again, I read this a while ago, if I'm remembering right, this Persephone was a little bit more like meek and, and naive and stuff, but the Hades character is still really good. And she is like very strong and like stoic, um, cares for her people, all of that. So I, I did really like that. Then we have one I recently read in the Hayes and Persephone vlog, which I will link on the screen if you haven't seen that, but that is A Touch of Darkness by Scarlet St. Clair. This is not good. I'm gonna put this down here. <laughs> this is bad. It's, um, I mean, is it meh or is it shit? I think I gave it two stars. Not the worst thing I've ever read. It's, it's not quite as bad as like Gatekeeper's Bride. Uh, but is that an indicator should be any higher? I'm, I'm, mm, I don't think so. The Persephone character in here, while she does have some more spunk, is more annoying and it's all like miscommunication. Um, she is just really irritating. And I don't say that often about female characters because I know that's something that people say a lot about female characters. So I'm very careful but she just always assumes the worst out of like everyone, especially Hades. And th there's a lot of sex scenes in here and it's just like so ham-fisted in um, because the author wanted to have sex scenes. Like the sex scenes and the progression of when they start having sex, like just don't make sense. Um, uh, no, uh, didn't, didn't like it. And it's like a multiple book series. Absolutely not. Then we have a road by any other name by Sarah McLean. This is a historical romance that is Hades Persephone, and it is pretty direct. Um, obviously, it's not there; it's not them, um, but the like themes and everything, like the, some of the beats and stuff, are pretty similar, which is why I'm putting it in an actual retelling category, not an inspired by. I really like this. Um, this is where the main character is a um, woman who's like a little bit older, not like older, older in our times, but for them, I think she's like in her 20s or something. And she's had some scandals um, that weren't really her fault and she hasn't gotten married yet and whatever. Um, and something ends up happening where she gets in this like compromising situation with this guy that she used to know was like a childhood best friend of hers. And he lost his fortune um, and lost his title in a gambling situation when he was young. And now he's like gained a lot of his fortune back um, because he runs this gambling den, which is called like Fallen Angel or something. It's something like, you know, obviously like an underworld type setting. I, oh, I think he tricks her into this. I think that's the whole like kidnapping aspect. He sort of tricks her into this. He puts her in a situation where it's not compromising, but everyone's gonna think that it is so that she has to like marry him. Um, and he, so he's, he does this for like his like fortune reasons, but then they end up 
like actually falling in love and it's so good. Um, I, I really like the um, chemistry between them. Um, I liked that they had this like past, which isn't really a case for Stephanie thing, but they had this like past thing where she like loved him before and they like had this, you know, this, this thing is like kids. And it's, it's just, I really like it. And she has some spunk and some fire too. She does not put up with any of his shit. So I really like this. I'm gonna put this in great. Then we have The Goddess Test by Amy Carter. And this was a series that I really, really, really liked when I first read it. I don't know if it would hold up. I read it in like 2014. Um, I don't think it would hold up. I gave the first book like five stars from again, what I remember. <laughs> This is, um, it's Hades Persephone, however, um, Persephone's actually a still existing character, but she's, like, left Hades, which, like, would never happen. But, um, so now we have people trying to, like, become the new Persephone, and so she, our main character has to go through this, like, test to become the new Persephone, and there's, like, much more, like, drama and stuff involved, and there's other, like, Greek gods that are, like, around trying to, like, sort of mess stuff up. Um, I would say probably between like good and meh um but I really liked at the time that I read it I'm gonna go off of my like gut there and I like really shipped them um when I first read this one so then we have the bone gap by Laura Ruby and this is actually one that it is a Hades Persephone retelling but it's not the Hades Persephone retelling that I like because it very much goes off of the actual myth where Hades is very much more portrayed as like a villain like he like kidnaps this woman um so it doesn't really follow Hades and Persephone the Persephone character is a like side character kind of um, in this like small town where she is with I think like the main character's like brother or something and then gets like abducted and so she was almost like taking care of their family then she gets abducted by like the Hades character who's like very vague and they have to kind of go find her but it more follows the like younger brother and like his love interest kind of and it's just like a weird town sort of like fabulism situation um for this reason i'm gonna put it in matte not that it's necessarily a bad book it's obviously award-winning it has like stickers on the cover and stuff um but when i went into it i was expecting hey persephone you know like love story and didn't get that which isn't really the book's fault um necessarily it just wasn't what i was expecting because it was actually going off of like the traditional myth which is not what i dig so not the book's fault. I'm also gonna save this one because it's not quite direct. Um, okay, so we have Receiver of Many by Rachel Alexander, I think is the author. This one, I, oh, I think I'm gonna put it in math. Um, this one is very traditionally well-loved by a lot of Hades Persephone fans. However, it is erotica. Um, it is it is just a lot and that's fine if you like erotica I just happen to not and I barely remember anything about the characterizations of the characters um, I do know that he still has to like sort of kidnap her away but it is to protect her um, but they end up like <laughs> having sex in his chariot as they're going into the underworld and he kind of is basically like and it, 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 he is trying to be good about it like he's not actually being rapey but it's still very odd um, and he's like we have to do this to like solidify our marriage to protect you from I think like Zeus is trying to like hurt her or something I forget um, so and she's kind of like okay um, like she's she's okay with it but it's also just like what um, so the chance for us to see their relationship blooming is like not really there and that's something I really like about Hayes Persephone um, I like seeing them like learn to kind of trust each other and everything so I don't really have that, just a lot of sex. Um, and I don't remember much else, which is why it's going in the math category. And then, okay, the only other one that's like a serious retelling, because the other ones have some overlap with other things, is Laura Olympus. This is the webcomic on Webtoon, soon to become an actual bound up book of many of the episodes. This is a direct Hades Persephone retelling, and of course, this is going in God tier, of course! Everyone mentions this series to me all the time, even though I have read it um, and now. Um, for a while I hadn't, but I have, a, and 2019 is when I started it. Um, this is a direct Hades Persephone retelling. It's one of the best ones. The art's really cute. I don't love the personification of Persephone. That is my one complaint about the series. She is so innocent. They're leaning much more into her as like the spring goddess um, hasn't quite come into her power. I mean, she has, but like not completely. Um, so she doesn't really feel like actual Persephone yet. And the series has been going on since like 2018. So I'm kind of like, get to it. Um, and it, But it's just like taking a, a very long time to get around to that. But the Hades character, I really like the um, personification of him and his character. Um, there's also all the other Greek gods are involved. And I really like how they're done and their characters and things. So I really dig that one. There are some triggers in there. I don't think there's any triggers in the other books, but I'm not remembering necessarily. But there are some triggers in that one for sexual assault, not from Hades, um, from another character, but there are trigger warnings in the um, text and stuff. So 
any kind of triggers are warned about before you get into them. Um, so yeah, so those are all of the actual Hades Persephone retellings. Now let's get to the more inspired buys. Some of these are me grasping a bit, I would say, but some are, um, you know, very much inspired by us. Um, and like I said, some of them have some overlap with other tales, typically Beauty and the Beast for like almost all of these. So first we have Cruel Beauty by Rosamund Hodge. This is much more of a Beauty and the Beast retelling because it does have this stuff about like, she's married to this guy who, do they call him a demon? I don't even know if they do. She was gonna like go and kill him. He's taking her away. Um, he lives in this like castle manor thing. She's not supposed to go in certain areas. However, he definitely has this like death god sort of persona um and she has the persephone spunk which is why i kind of put it in this like inspired by category um i would say cruel beauty is good i know that not everyone likes it and i remember liking the first half much more than the second there are some inconsistencies in the second half like plot wise um but i do think the aesthetic of rosamund hodge's books i've only read this one but from what i know of her stuff i, I do like just like the vibes um and i also i did like their chemistry in this I did. Then we have Uprooted. This is um, by Naomi Novik. This one is more of a stretch, but I'm putting it on here because I didn't have a lot of things, obviously, to talk about without some of these um, in the categories. Uh, I would say this is much more of a Beauty and the Beast as well, but the reason I also group it in with Hades and Persephone is because she is, our main character is taken away by a guy who is very powerful, um, older, he's been around for a very long time because he's like a wizard. He has magic that is much more cold, not quite death magic, and she has nature magic that is like very um, powerful and like wild. And so she feels much more like a Hades and Persephone. She's, he's much more of an ass, so that's why it, uh, falls more in the Beauty and the Beast range because he's much more like curmudgeon-y um, than a Hades would be. But I really like their chemistry. Uh, this is not very much like romance heavy as some of the other books on the list, um, but I dig their chemistry and it still gives me Hades Persephone vibes, but it's very, very light in comparison to some of these other ones. Um, I want to put it in God tier, but just for the sake of the fact that like this is very much a stretch, I'm gonna put it in great. <laughs> um, but I do think their dynamic is God tier. Then we have the Winter Night Trilogy by Catherine Arden. Again, a stretch. This is not directly Hades Persephone. However, our main character is sort of this bridge between um, the magical world and the real world set in Eastern Europe. Um, so it has Eastern European folklore mythology and things and all of the weirdness that is Eastern European folklore, which is very cool. Um, and she is very powerful. We watch her through her entire life and how she turns into this person who feels very much like a Persephone stepping into her power type thing. She doesn't really have the naiveness ever that Persephone did in like the original myth, which is fine with me because it's not what I like anyway. And then the Hades type character is actually like a winter death god. Um, again, this is very loosely Hades Persephone because some of these, and the reason I included some of these is because there is a lot of overlap here with a lot of other myths because Hades Persephone as a as a trope as a theme um, is so old so there are a lot of other mythologies and stories and things that go off of that you know what I mean they're sort of based on that so that's why I included this but yeah like their dynamic as a Hades Persephone um, pair and as partners and as just all these things I should put it in great kind of like uprooted because it's a stretch however it's God <laughs> It's God tier. If you like Hades Persephone Dynamics, I can't imagine you not liking this series, especially like their romance. I can, I cannot imagine. It just has all of the things. And um, like I said, equals, different kinds of like magic. And there's not really like an underworld necessarily, but like sort of, um, it's just, it's, it's very good. Um, I cannot put that in anything less than God tier. Then we have Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J. Maas. This is the only book of the series that is Hades Persephone, although you can argue that Reese and Feyre are like Hades Persephone, you know, but this was very much inspired by Hades Persephone. Um, this is actually, this is good. Uh, I would say, I, I, I really dig this. It, this is very much set up as Hades Persephone. She gets like stolen away to his like kingdom and uh, the, on the outside people all think that it's like an evil, you know, place and there is that element to it that um, he uses to kind of cover up how good the like night court, which is what their court is called, is. I'm sure most of you have read A Court of Mist and Fury, so I don't need to overly explain. Um, but Feyre in A Court of Mist and Fury, as much as I don't like her in the rest of the series, has the fire and spunk of a Persephone character. It's very much shown that her powers are just as powerful um, as his and she um, can be very fearsome in her right. Um, and I, I just, I dig their vibe. 
I, ooh, I think I'm gonna put it in God tier. I don't know, I'm, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. Um, I, th I think for a Hades Persephone inspired story, again, I think this is so good. Viewing this almost as like a standalone, not so much as something within the rest of the series, which I know is hard to do, but I think Reese does feel very much like a Hades character. Um, with his, like, caring about his people, um, having some, a bit of a facade, not being a complete asshole, just being maybe a little bit more, like, closed off at times. Um, yeah. yeah. I think it's got, I think it's got here. I don't know. Then we have a deal with the Elf King by Elise Kova, and this is a blend of Beauty and the Beast and Hades Persephone. It leans a little bit more Hades Persephone, I would say. Um, she is a human that is the human queen, so she has to go to the Elf Kingdom and become married to the Elf King in order to, like, balance the worlds, and he has this sort of, like, death magic, they call it. However, you don't really see a lot of how it's really connected to death, but it's supposed to be connected to, like, the beyond, which is their, like, death. And there is, um, separations between those worlds, and but he's connected more to that world, she has nature magic so it's much more of like a Persephone character and she is allowed to go back to the human world like once a year so again more much more of like a Hades Persephone kind of thing. Um, this was okay I would say. I know a lot of people don't like this and some other writing in this so check out other reviews if you do want to read it. Uh, I didn't mind it though. This is not the worst thing I've read again. We have these to like contend with it being like some of the worst but there is a little bit of just like some of the things about the plot outside of the Hades Persephone stuff is like not super strong and that's not great. Um, but she does have more of the spunk. He's a little bit more of a jerk. So again, he leans more towards like a beast character than a Hades character. But I would say that he does care about his people, but he leans more beastly in that way. And lastly, we have Keturah and Lord Death. This is an older YA story. Keturah is in the woods at the beginning of the tale and she is going to die and she meets the personification of death, meets actual death, and basically makes a deal with him. She starts telling him a story, which has a very Scheherazade element to it as well, but starts telling him a story um, about basically her meeting like her one true love and he basically says well if you can do that like I will not take you um but he, and he keeps wanting to keep her alive to get more of the story because she's a really good storyteller and then it goes through this like fairy tale esque story of her kind of like trying to meet and find her true love in this like medieval town that she lives in and and you can tell throughout the story that like obviously she um is not going to meet the like love of her life in this town and she's very much misdirecting herself in a lot of ways and she comes to find out that like she's always had this connection to death as a concept and um obviously it's called couture and lower death so it sort of it says that the beginning sort of how things are going to end up um but i did really like this one i would put this into great because we don't get a lot of the other hate persephone elements you do get their sort of like bond but you don't get a lot of it it's much more um almost like implied like because he just is you know kind of coming back and forth and being like Katura, like you need to you know do this uh, like we have this bargain um so you don't get to see like them like necessarily falling in love or like having a life or anything um you don't get to see the underworld you don't get to see a lot of these other elements but Katura is a very powerful character again in her own right not because she has any magic but because of her storytelling ability he is very much that like stoic you know kind of character um and all of that. So I would say that you don't have all the Hades Persephone elements to put it into like a god tier, but again, very close. So that is it for my ranking of all the books that I have read that are Hades Persephone retellings or inspired buys. I feel like I might have read more inspired buys potentially, um, but I, I couldn't think of them at this point. So there might have been some on that, that weren't on here that I have read. Um, but that is it for all of them that I've read so far. So based on my recommendations, let me know if you have any other books that I should read that are Hayes Persephone retellings. I think there are some coming out this year, which will hopefully help. But this is why I've put this off for so long and actually recommending my favorites because my favorites besides Lore Olympus are like not actually retellings, like direct retellings. Even in the greats, like there's only like two directory tellings and they're not actually Hayes Persephone. You know, they're other characters, you know? So like the fact that the actual like straight up Hayes Persephone retellings are all down here in the bleh category uh, is why I put it off for some time, but I had to do it. I've read, you know, nearly 20. So it was time for me to rank them, but I hope you enjoyed this. Comment down below, let me know your thoughts. Thank you all for watching and I'll see all of you guys soon. Bye.